We live in a society where there, there are a whole lot of people that love animals. Uh, there are a lot of people who are dog lovers, love dogs more than they love human beings. As crazy as that may sound, as sad to some human beings as that may sound, that is a fact of life. You look at animals as very trusting, as very uh, as relatively helpless, uh, you know, at the mercy of, of anybody. If they're mistreated in any way, it evokes and provokes an incredible level of emotion. And I believe that's the case uh, with, with Michael Vick. I think that's one of the reasons that Michael Vick, uh, incredibly educated now, uh, uh, about, you know, you know, just, just, just animal cruelty and some of the things that's been going on in our society throughout this country in regards to that. Uh, the Humane Society has educated him about it. PETA has made sure the world has known about it. Um, you know, you, the more educated you become, the more uh, he's been able to realize uh, how egregious his actions were. And myself, along with you, Skip, we've given Michael Vick a, a boatload of credit because He's really going about the business of turning around his life in the right way, and, and, and more so than any professional athlete I've ever seen, uh, has not been shy about accepting accountability. It's one thing to accept accountability and just walk away, not talk to anybody, want the story to go away. He embraces it. He embraces having to give lectures. He embraces having to talk about uh, his egregious actions, what a mistake he made, how he had to pay a price for it. And I give him an incredible level of credit. Um, and to me, as far as I'm concerned, he's epitomized what a model citizen can be once they're allowed to resurrect themselves because of the actions that they've taken. But that's not going to alleviate the ire, uh, the hatred, the venom and hostility and the vitriol that is aimed in his direction from those uh, who are animal lovers. They're not going anywhere. Some of them say they will never forgive him. And if they had an opportunity to do the harm to him that he did to those dogs, they would do it. And I think that's, what you, that's why you saw what you saw, or we're hearing what we're hearing. I got to tell you, Stephen A., I am shocked. And I am a dog lover. And I cannot relate to what you just said, that people would still, this many years, what, what are we now, five or six years later? Five. Five years. Mm -hmm. They would still want to do harm to Michael Vick. I, I'm such a dog lover that a few years back, I, I lost my last dog and I still haven't gotten over her. And I miss you, Dusty. And I'm, I'm one of those crazy people you're talking about, Stephen A. I'd let her lick me in the face. <laughs> Kiss me in the mouth. I didn't care. I'm just one of those people. I love dogs. And I want another one, and I, I can't come to grips with how short their lives last. And once you, you get one, you just know the clock starts ticking and things are going to go wrong at about the 9, 10 year mark. So that's me. And yet, when I read those gory details in that report, and I meant literally gory details of what Michael Vick did to those dogs, I was outraged. I was sick to my stomach. And yet, I said on the air, sitting in this chair, that I will forgive him, I will never forget. And I haven't forgotten, but I definitely have forgiven Michael Vick, because Stephen A., he paid a severe price. Severe price. What was it, 18 months in prison? Yep. 18 Ooh, months. months. And oh. Levensworth. Yep. Levensworth. He paid so Federal many prices beyond just being in prison. Right. We, we know all the prices he paid. And then I have to take the man at his word and his actions speak, he's spoken at school after school after inner city school about the, the horrors and, and the abuses of dog fighting. And he's well, worked with the Humane Society and it, it all rings true to me. And I think they do have a, his kids do have a dog and yeah. they're, they're trying to do it all the right way. I, I, gotta, I gotta give in to the man, I gotta give it up. Well, let me, let me say this, number one, uh, if you are an individual or an advocate for those individuals who have been incarcerated, coming out of prison and receiving a second yeah. chance because they can be better contributors to society, Michael Vick is the epitome of that. In that regard, he's the quintessential role model in terms of resurrecting oneself, truly learning from his mistakes, and showing the proper level of contrition. Let's get that out the way first. He's been absolutely phenomenal in yeah. that regard and deserves, a, and deserves a bunch of credit. But it's also important to point out how indirectly 
and non-intentionally, the NFL itself as a league, meaning Roger Goodell, also as a team, meaning first Jeffrey Lurie, or actually Jeffrey Lurie and Andy Reid, their willingness to give him a second chance, in a lot of those folks' eyes, animal lovers, flies in the face of, of logic. I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that. But I'll never forget years ago, I was on MSNBC, and somebody from Peter said that Michael Vick needed to have his brain examined before he's allowed to play again. There were others that were coming out and saying animal rights activists yeah. who said that he should never be allowed to play in the NFL again. It wasn't enough for them that he went to a federal penitentiary, that he served 18 months in prison. In their eyes, something more egregious should have happened. And that is, once he got out of jail, he should have been close to starving. He should have not been allowed to work. He should have been allowed to struggle. He should not have been allowed to come back into the NFL and earn an honest living because their attitude was the NFL, meaning professional sports, is so lucrative he's really not paying a price. Now, obviously, you and I believe that is utterly ridiculous. It, it, once you pay your debt to society, that should be that. And you should be allowed to come back and, and, and serve, you know, this country, yourself, your family, and whomever, in any way you're able to do so legally. But their belief is that he should have never been allowed that privilege again. That should have been a lifetime ban. So, again, that contributes to the venom and the hatred because they look at him as somebody that has now resurrected himself and is being celebrated. And they're saying, how can anyone who's ever done what he did, no matter what price he paid, ever be allowed to be celebrated in any way again? Again, you and I are completely different in that belief. But there are a lot of animal rights activists and animal lovers out there who will never change in their, in their belief in that regard. And I've met them, Skip. I've spoken to them. And they've got on me for the positions that I've taken. They will not waver. If something happened to Michael Vick, similar to what happened to those dogs, in their eyes, that's their form of justice.